Right, good afternoon now, folks as we head into US trade on Tuesday the 15th of August after some interesting uh, retail sales figures from the US as well as Chi uh, Chinese Canadian CPI which we will break down now in a minute apart from that other news we were speaking about UK's wage growth earlier on this morning about the unemployment rate slightly ticking up uh, as well which obviously had some implications for the price of sterling so we'll have a look at that chart as well apart from that lack of clear uh, lack of lack of fresh information out across the board in 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 markets this morning we touched on the chinese rate cut uh, as well as as i said uk's labor market figures but apart from that nothing really else of note across the major headlines but we'll jump across to here and we can see stock indexes us equity futures european equities and asia pacific equities all lower across the board now that was helped slightly lower by the retail sales figures from the us at 130 but we have had a bit of a bounce back which is maybe a slightly bit of a uh, unsure reaction from markets which we'll try and make sense of now in a minute once we jump across to some charts but obviously fear surrounding China helping to drive these lowers uh, helping to drive stock markets lower should I say with yields higher over the last number of days couple that with fears over the Chinese economy has sent stocks lower over the course of this morning you can see commodities lower as well oil down lower off the back of again struggles to do with the Chinese economy but US dollar pretty mixed the Australian dollar slightly lower with stock indexes but really not a massive amount of downside really on any of these on any of these currencies but sterling higher across the board obviously off the back of that uk data this morning which we had out this morning the unemployment rate ticked higher slightly but Average hourly earnings, or not average hourly earnings, average earnings, sorry. So wage growth at record levels in the UK. Now ahead of inflation or beating inflation. So positivity for the kind of cost of living crisis for a lot of people. But in terms of upwards pressure on inflation, that cannot be what the central bank will uh, will hope for. But unemployment rate rising slightly has offset those gains on the price of the currency but inflation and retail sales out this afternoon 130 now retail sales from the us strong numbers across the board you can see the month over month figure consensus 0.4 plus an actual figure of 0.7 once you exclude automobiles up even further 0.4 consensus to a one percent actual figure which is you know positive for consumer spending within the u.s economy import prices and export prices again some uh, over towards the kind of inflationary reading um or uh, and a contributing factor to inflationary reading 0.2 consensus for the two of them but prices for imports and exports up 0.4 and 0.7 as well so that's likely to continue to put upwards pressure on inflation which we did see tick up in the u.s last week we then come over to canada today at 1 30 where you can see the headline cpi print at expected to tick up 0.2 percent up to three percent we actually got an increase of 0.5 up to 3.3 percent in canada the cbi print the month over month figure sorry 0.3 percent consensus and actual of 0.6 the core cbi print the yearly figure was expected to tick down but did hold firm at 3.2 percent as you can see now when you look at uh when you look at the kind of movements across markets you can see yields did pop higher which would be the expected reaction to say higher interest rates or higher interest rates for longer but you know if the fed have to keep hiking interest rates or if these central banks have to keep hiking interest rates the more that they hike interest rates the more negative it's going to be for the economy going forward and if inflation continues to rise uh, certainly not a positive for uh, certainly not a positive for, for for markets so i think markets a little bit unsure how to react to that sort of that sort of release you are up then you are down and then you're pushing back higher it looks like they want to meet back in the middle so a little bit of a tricky one to read into you go the s p 500 which is pushing slightly higher which is a bit of a difficult one to to sort of wrap your head around when it comes to when it comes to trying to make sense of the uh, trying to make sense of the price action you would expect stocks to push lower than off the back of that but markets don't really seem to believe that or haven't seemed to believe the fed in terms of continuing to hike interest rates uh, going forward and 
yeah, again maybe just showing a bit of kind of I don't care what the what the print is and it wants to uh, wants to truck back higher yeah we've had a bit of downside over the last number of weeks but it's been really gradual downside it's not been any sort of aggressive move to the downside and this range trading looks set to continue you can see any time it pops lower pops back higher towards the high of the range and again we had a pop lower um, over the course of this morning seemingly it wants to pop back higher and i would not be too surprised to see this back towards 4500 on the s p you do have some underlying strength here with higher lows being built across here you do have a higher high then across here from uh, from the movement yesterday higher across stock index so don't really go in line with what the data suggests you know, this more kind of technical range is seemingly what is playing out at the moment so I'd probably advise maybe staying a little bit clear of stock indexes at the moment unless you were going to play the range which has proved fruitful over the last number of weeks but US dollar as well not doing too much a little bit of US dollar weakness off the back of yields starting to push lower so not the expected reaction that you would want to see to, to, to strong retail sales strong retail sales or strong consumer spending contributing factor to inflation uh, is with that being strong you'd expect some US dollar strength some strength in yields and then some equity weakness off the back of that which is just not what we're seeing so be interesting to see our markets open up in about five minutes time once we get the US open for trade at 2 30 uh, do they start to react the way we would probably like to see it I would probably suggest keeping your money in your pocket for a little bit of time give markets a bit of time to digest the news see what direction they want to head in but range trading the stock index is buying the lows and selling the highs has as I said proved fruitful over the last number of weeks it may look like it is set to continue well biggest mover today is the FTSE aggressively lower off the back of that strong wage growth you can see cable uh, not aggressively higher certainly not as aggressively higher as the FTSE but it is through the highs making an attempt at breaking through the highs but with that being quoted against the US dollar maybe not what you would want to see but Canadian dollars across the board are moving higher post cpi and with such a strong beat on inflation you'd have to imagine the rate hikes are back on the cards for the bank of canada so canadian dollar strength seems the only clear cut direction over the course of today dollar yen continues to push higher which is japanese yen weakness so in terms of pairing the canadian dollar with something cad yen seems the way to play it into today's u.s session